So after a short break, it's round 10 of Beat the Manager. Lee Allenson is 5-4 up. Today's opponent, it's not a player. It's the chairman of Hendon Football Club, Simon Lawrence. Simon, how are you? Very well, thank you, Steve. Very well indeed. How are Excellent. you? Uh, I'm good, thank you very much. Uh, are you looking forward to, obviously you've seen these over the, the last few months while we've been in lockdown. Do you fancy your chances against the boss? Well, you know, I've often said to Lee that I'm only the chairman, I know nothing about football. So, <laughs> you know, I expect, I expect to be defeated 3-0 uh, quite comfortably, no pressure at all on me. <laughs> Other than three 0 quite frankly, I think he needs to reconsider his position. <laughs> <laughs> how do you feel about that, Mr. Allenson? I just um, I know how much he knows about Hendon Football Club, so um, this is going to be very tight. And I've done absolutely zero research this week, so it's uh, it's going to be tough. In fairness, to prepare. Uh, I, I've made your questions nothing about Hendon. Um, Good. So, so you've got a chance. And for once, there's nothing about Alfie Bird either. <laughs> so you've got half a chance. Before we get into the quiz, um, so that we're recording this on uh, Thursday evening. And today, Betty has finished uh, unbelievably 100 days, 100 miles. And she's raised an unbelievable £25,000. Incredible. Talk us through it. You must be such a proud dad. It's uh, uh, immensely proud. You know, it's um, it's one of them we've built up to, to, to today for, for a long time. And it's very funny. About 15, 20 days ago, we were we were sitting outside um, the, one of the local cafes up the road. And we'd sort of come to an end, me and Faye. We were really struggling with it. It was really hard. And a, a friend of ours who's, whose wife was in the hospice at the time had, had missed a turn into our house and was just going to post a check to Betty and, and, and we see him and he got out of his car and, and give us a check and Betty some sweets and kind of broke down and it gave us the biggest push ever to, to go and you know carry on and, and finish today and I have to say I wasn't expecting anything today it's it's been probably the most emotional day I've said to you I've, I've had a tough week anyway this week but um, so emotional so, you know, I, I, I'm not one of them to, to, to break down like that, but riding through the hospice in the last minute and we had some of the patients and nurses standing there and um, Faye was behind the finishing line and just really emotional, so, so proud of what she's achieved. And I, I don't think she actually realises what she's achieved and what she's done. She's changed a lot of lives. And, and you know, the, the gentleman that we see that day that, that give us that last push was there and, fantastic achievement my family were there and it was just so nice and I'm so so proud of her Faye's so proud of her and, and Faye's got to have a special mention all this hundred days she's done with her as well I've obviously went through the operation Luca helped out Carly my other daughter she, she helped out it's been a real family affair and um, yeah immensely proud of, of all the family and um, 25,000 pound I just can't believe it and uh, you see what it means to people you don't realise it when you go out every day on your bike you do your mile and but you've seen what it's meant to some people today, and that's really, really special. Yeah, she's done unbelievably. And the, I, I saw the uh, local BBC News, local ITV News were there to cover it as well. So I just I'm want to sure, say, as well, um, sorry, just, um, just thank you, the football club. You know, I, I said to you the reason why I come to the club because of, of the people. Um, you know, the way they've, they've supported us as a family is truly remarkable and amazing. Um, and I can't thank them enough. And, and the football world as well, it's been great. We've met some great people along the way. We've met some, you know, some clubs that have gone out their way to send the shirts. But Hendon Football Club especially, just fantastic people. And um, from, I know he's sitting here now, and I don't really want to say it, but from the chairman to you guys, to, to everyone else, I, c I can't thank you enough. I really mean that. It's um, very, very special. And I'm very, very fortunate and lucky to be at such a good club. Hopefully that's kept me job for another year. <laughs> <laughs> Simon, Simon as, as, as chairman of the club, anything you'd like to add to that? I, it's difficult to add to, to what's gone on on social media over the, last, over the last 100 days. And the idea that I might have something that is more exciting to say than whatever David Beckham has said or Alex Horn has said or Frankie Dettori has said is, is quite laughable, really. Um, you know, I'll, I'll just, on behalf of the club, just say that we are absolutely bowled over, um, not only by the last 100 days, because that, the last 100 days was, was, was Betty's 
um, showcase, if you like, her opportunity to stand up and, and be a person in her own right. And she's just been an absolute superstar. But since, since the first day that I met Lee and then met Faye, Luca, Carly, just and Alfie and everybody, Ian and everybody, Jim, who's involved in, in, the, in the broader family, just what a, what a pleasure and privilege it's been over the, over the period since we've, we've, we first met each other. And, and, and hopefully long may it continue. Definitely. Well, I'm getting all emotional now. I think. Oh, no, I feel like crying myself. It's been an emotional <laughs> day. <laughs> Is this a precursor to sacking him, Simon? Is that what we <laughs> yes. do? Boat of confidence. Yes. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I'll just stay right, on. I'll keep the cones up. There's no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, you're five four up. You feeling confident today? Uh, I'll, I'll give it a go. <laughs> right. I know Simon. He, he's clever. I don't believe in all this. You know. He wants me to win. This is going to be... Uh, this is no, going trust to be me, he really doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, as always, Lee, we're going, to, we're going to start with you. Concentrating, are you ready for this? Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're kicking you off with a Man United question. You oh, rarely oh. ever get these right. So, first question for Lee. Name the Chelsea player that missed a penalty in the shootout that led to Manchester United winning the Champions League in 2008. What, one of the two, or...? Well, he missed one right at the very end, which sealed it for United. Nicholas and Elka. John Ooh, Terry. Not, well, I'll, give you, I'll give you John Terry. <laughs> Nicholas and Elka missed the... Terry missed the one to win it, and Nicholas That's and Elka it. missed the one to lose it. That, all right. Fair enough. All right, I'll give you that one. <laughs> I'll have two points. <laughs> no, you can have one. That's cheeky. Right, Mr Chairman, your first question. Simon, all your questions, bizarrely, strangely not, are all about Hendon. So... Okay. Um, Here's the first one. It's the most recent one as well. How many goals did Ricardo German score for the club before leaving for Crawley Town in early 2019? Mm, that's a good one. And, and, and because we like you, Simon, you can have it within kind of three. Yeah, so <laughs> if you can kind of within three to the, to the right number. I've actually got a number okay. in my head. It might not be right, but I'm going to give it a go if he gets it wrong. Go on. So I'm, I'm going to, well, given that, I'm going I'm to go with 20. Lee, what would you have gone for? 18. Well, Simon was closer, as, you, as I hope he would have been. It was 21. But we'll give you that, Simon, because we like you. <laughs> I'm happy with that. <laughs> there you go. Um, so before we go on to the next one, so, um, Simon, talk to us about your journey with Henry. Normally you talk to the players and who they've played for and how many goals they've scored and blah dee but Simon, your journey with Hendon is going back, what, this is what, the sixth decade, I think? Um, let's see, the 20, I think it's the 29th of August, will be my 50th anniversary of watching um, Hendon, uh, my first game. Hendon v St Albans, 3-1, um, dragged along by my brother, some of the viewers will know Jeremy, um, dragged along, um, loved it was a convert from the final whistle onwards. We won 3-1. Peter Anderson, the old Luton player, uh, scored a couple of goals um, and just absolutely loved it from then on. And I, I was come from a Spurs family. My dad was a Spurs fan. Jeremy still goes to watch Spurs um, from time to time. Uh, and I went from being a Spurs fan to being a Spurs fan who liked Hendon to being a Hendon fan who liked Spurs to being just an out-and-out -out Hendon fan. And... You know, it's, it's 50 years is a long time and there have been some fabulous, fabulous moments as a supporter and as a chairman. And there have been some dreadful moments, both as a supporter and as a chairman. Um, but I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't change a, a, a day of it. And um, that, that's, that's been my, my journey. Um, back in 2006, um, Mike Hart, Phil Rogers and I recognised that the club was in a difficult place um, and so we formed the Supporters Trust and a couple of years later the Supporters Trust took ownership of the club um, and it was kind of first, first amongst equals uh, and I, I was uh, appointed chairman and uh, the, the thing I'll say as chairman is I probably enjoy the highs, an FA Cup win for example, more as a chairman than I did when I wasn't chairman and the lows are just dreadful compared to, uh, to what it was like when I was a supporter. When I was a supporter, we get beaten in the FA Cup. You kind of, you, you brush it off and by Monday, uh, Tuesday, the latest, you've, you've, you've kind of recovered. But as, as a chairman, when you see that, that 
big potential pot of money drifting away from you, um, it's, it's the end of the world because you start thinking about now the, the work has to begin in earnest for next season. And it could be, you know, it could be September, October, and you're, you're having to have, have those thoughts and start to think about what happens next. All right. Well, we'll talk about some of the individual highs and lows uh, before we finish. So it's one all after two questions. Lee, here's your second question. Um, who did Tyson Fury defeat to become the WBA, IBF, WBO and IBO World Heavyweight Champion? Vladimir Klitschko. You're on fire tonight, Mr. Allenson. Boxing is my sport. Boxing is my sport. It's unbelievable. <laughs> We've not even had the usual 10-minute pregnant pause while you go around the houses trying to work <laughs> out what the, what the answer might be and then demanding clues. Incredible. All right, two, one. Simon, on to you for your second question. Uh, so you had a recent one in your first question. This is going to take you back in time. Can you name two of the three former Hendon players who were the highest capped England internationals? In an amateur international. Amateur internationals. Um, that'd be Rod Hader with yep. 65 caps, the most yep. capped England amateur of all time. Uh, and John Swannell, um, I think with 61 caps. Don't know, I just needed the names. <laughs> oh, in that, yeah, definitely 61. <laughs> John Swannell. Both of, them played, both of them played in that, in that first game I ever watched back in 1970. There you go. Any idea who the third one might be? I want to say Peter Deadman, but I don't think it is Peter Deadman. I think there's somebody before my time who played, who played more games. Mike um, Pinner. Yeah, Mike. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, before my okay. time. Okay. All right. So, unbelievably, we're four questions down. It's two each. We've got sure. one question left each. Then we're heading to a tie break. Lee, your third and final question. Which player holds the record for the most consecutive goals in Premier League games? Jamie Vardy. Are you sure? Yeah. You're right. <laughs> Am I? <laughs> Is it 11? Was it 11 goals? 11 games? I don't care. I just write the number, the okay. name down. I don't care. <laughs> You're right. Okay. It's 3-2. Simon. No pressure. No pressure on you. If you don't get this right, he goes 6-4 ahead. This will be disastrous. So, Simon, I know you're going to get this one, this one right. Name the Hendon player who scored twice for the club in the FA Cup draw at home to Lake Norient in November 1997. Is he pondering? I'm only pondering to give Lee a little bit of hope. <laughs> <laughs> it's Colin Simpson. Well done. It's it's three all. Tell us about your tell us about your, your greatest Hendon high. I'm assuming that the replay um, that Hendon win, Junior Lewis scoring the goal um, at Aurea was probably one of them. Was the biggest one. Do, do you know what the hairs on the back of my neck have just gone up as you've been just, as you've been mentioning that? That's absolutely that's up there. Um, I think. <sighs> I mean, th there are many. There, there are so many. So just, just a couple. We had to. We thought that we had to beat Slough um, away in the league back in about 1986, 87, in order to stay up, and um, we beat them 4-1, which was fantastic. A great performance, great all-round performance, and a number of the guys who who've turned up over the last couple of years um, to to celebrate Dermot Drummond's life on Dermot's match um, were were playing in that game, and 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 Roger Wade. I think scored in that game. Um, that that was that would have been enough in itself. But about half an hour, forty-five minutes after the game, and we're all in the bar cheering and still celebrating. And the secretary at the time asked a bunch of us to come into the dressing room, uh, and we walked in. I mean, it'd been a long, hard season, and we we Ted Hardy had got us out the depths of relegation. And we, you know, Hendon supporters. There's not many of us, but we do support our club. Um, and and Ted and the support and the and the players rather gave us a standing ovation as we walked into the dressing room. That was a, that was a real high. And I think something even um, a bit more recent than that, not a game as such, but the day that I was able to announce um, in, the, uh, in, the, in the bar at Silver Jubilee Park um, at the end of our uh, awards night, would, would have been, I guess, 2016-17, 
um, I was able to announce that we had obtained the ground grading, a C grade, and that we were going to be able to play um, at the start of the, the following season. Um, I think there was only two or three people who knew that, myself, Rob Morris, and, and, and probably the rest of our board were the only ones who knew that um, when I announced it. And, and that was just a huge privilege to be the person who, who, who effectively announced that Hendon's short to medium term future was secure. So th th those are certainly up there with, with top highlights. All right. Well, so talking about some play against Needham Market was a big highlight. <laughs> <laughs> Not so much. So, Lee, talking about um, Simon talking about playing there, uh, and um, our first game, pre-season game, is, is Touchwood almost upon us. Uh, Saturday, we are away at Bracknell. Thoughts? Yeah, I mean, obviously, we, we, we go back this Saturday. Um, we've been doing the odd tick-over session, but we, we give the boys the weekend off last weekend to spend with their families because, as you know, from this Saturday, we, we go full steam ahead till sort of May next year. So uh, we're back in Saturday, Tuesday, Thursday. We'll work extremely hard and we'll go into our first pre-season against Bracknell, which Bobby Wilkinson, very good friend of mine, we, we speak on a regular basis. Um gone and built a, a very good side at Bracknell. But it's not about that. You know, it's not about results in pre-season. It's just good to, to get minutes back into the boys' legs. We'll, we'll go with a 22-man a squad and, and give minutes to people. And um, just, just looking forward to getting back. As I said to you earlier, it's been, it's been an extremely tough week for some reason this week, whether it's because you know you're going back, whereas the weeks before, we never knew when we were going to go back. Um, but just, uh, just excited, you know, looking forward to it. And... Um, the boys are looking forward to it and, and that's what it's all about, you know, just getting back out on that football pitch. So since we last spoke, um, you secured the signing uh, of Sean Lucien uh, for this season. So I, I guess to me, the only player from last season's squad uh, who we don't really know about yet is Solomon Sambu. News on him? Yeah, I, I, think, we're, I think we're quite close with Sol. Um, you know, like anything, uh, as I said last year, I don't believe when, when Solomon come to to Hendon, we played him through a, a hamstring injury, which looking back, we had to at the time because of the position we were in. But no one knows how much he, he was struggling. He also had a brand new baby that was born in the season. So he, he'd had a tough time. And I don't really feel we see the best of Solomon. I, I felt we did at Dort, which is still Wimborne. But I thought he was a little bit in and out. But the, the soul I had at Biggleswade and St Albans is, is a top-class player. And, um, you know, I've always said this, we're very lucky to have him. And if we can keep... Him. He's a very, very good player and only get better. He's, he's lost a little bit of weight and he, he's come in pre-season and looked very, very sharp. The problem is, like anything, Sol will hold, hold out to see if there's anything in the league above because that's the level he's used to playing. And I have to respect that. As I said to you before, I, I'm never standing in anyone's way from stepping up. You know, delighted to get Sean Lucien over the line. It, it took a while, but we, we eventually got him and, and obviously bringing in Matty Ball. And Mabel and Sol complement each other very well. So I think we're quite close to Sol. At the same time, it, listen, anyone could come in for him at any time or, or day and we could lose him. The one thing that I think is quite positive, he really enjoys being at the club. He's trained in the, the, the Saturdays that we've been in training. Um, and it's, it's quite local to, to where he is. So I think we've got a fantastic chance. But until I see him sign that form, I tried to make him do it when, when Sean was there two weeks ago. We, we, we put the form in, inside his, in his nose, but um, he never quite signed it there and then. But listen, we'll, we'll see. Hopefully this Saturday he'll be in and um, we'll have another chat from there. How far away? This, the, the squad looks pretty solid now. Uh, you certainly got a, a, a good nucleus there. How many more players are you looking to bring in? No, I'm, I'm done. Um, Sol would be would be the last one. Uh, I, I didn't feel that we needed a lot. I said that to you before. I feel that Matty Ball brings in a, a quality in midfield that you know that they'll see a different Matt Ball to what they see before at the football club. Um, he doesn't play in the ten role no more. He plays in a deeper role. He, he gets the ball moving. He gets your players playing, um, and, and he's a he, he's really grown up with it in age, Matty. And um, I, I feel that we've got a, a very good a, a player on our hands. And, and, and I feel that we don't need anything else. You know, I say Sol would be the, the final piece. We've got some fantastic young lads that have come in and, and really impressed me. And I think it's always crucial that you have a few young, hungry players there that want to impress. Um, and we've got two or three that have done really well. One lad I come up against last year for, for my college scheme. He's only 17 at Brentford. He's been in pre-season. The lad comes through 
our youth team, um, Dimi, he, he's done very well. So, you know, we'll have a couple of young lads with us. We want to bring in just a, a, another goalkeeper as well, just to take some pressure off Northy, who, who's come back in pre-season and looks fantastic. Um, so, as far as I'm concerned, we're, we're almost there. You know, I'm not looking to change too much then, and, and we'll go into the season and pre-season with the, with the squad ready to go. All right. So, are you ready to go then for the tie break? Ready when you are. Simon? Absolutely. <laughs> Simon, how's your knowledge of motor racing? Any good? Oh, dear. Um, I think it's to do with cars, isn't it? <laughs> You're halfway there, mate. You're halfway there. Okay, so this <laughs> That's is... me, uh, Dan. This is, the, this is tie break, sudden death. Uh, Lee, Simon, if you know the answer, just shout it out, all right? Um, and I've only got one question, so the one who's closest um, is going to win. So, to win this week, how many times... Has Lewis Hamilton won the Formula One World Championship? Six. Six. Oh. Simon was Simon was first. Was first, he won it. Uh, I knew well done, Mr. Chairman. It's five. Well, do you want to give him the trophy, Lee? It was a draw. Pretty decent guess, then. It a draw. It draw. wasn't a draw because he was <laughs> quicker than you. I got it right as well. Yeah, but he got it right quicker than you got it right, which meant that you kind of got it wrong because he got it no, right. I, there, was a, there was a delay in what I, when I said it. I said it as you were reading the question out, it just delayed. So, yeah, good draw, Mr. Chairman. It's a different, it's a different time zone where you are, Lee. Yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. No, no, Simon, well, are Simon, are you supposed to take this nonsense from the chair, from the manager? Is that, is that allowed? <laughs> He's on probation. <laughs> and I'm seeing how it's going. I'll just let him get on with it and see how we go. <laughs> All right, well, well, Simon, well done. How do, you, how do you feel? Well, considering that was a complete guess, I actually feel pretty good about it. Um, uh, and, and Lee, that's obviously a fifth defeat for you. Yeah, I, it was. A, it, it was. I knew you was either going to say Hamilton or um, Schumacher, and um, and then when you said Hamilton, I, I don't know why I delayed. I knew it was six, but no, listen, he's done well. He's, he's a great answer. All right. So listen, Simon, congratulations. Well done. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Just, just, just something from your perspective, from what you know at the moment, with with preseason starting, and then we've got London Senior Cup and. Uh, and stuff. Um, everything's going to be behind closed doors. Is that right to start with? Everything is behind closed doors. The the understanding is that we're gearing up to a 19th of September league start on the basis that it won't be behind closed doors. But I suppose if I could put my chairman's hat on just for a second and, and say I think that, you know, Lee will hate me for saying this, but I think every single date that we know is provisional at this stage. You know, it's not inconceivable that there will be changes to the way in which we need to operate that will render SJP unavailable for periods of time where we won't be able to play games because they would have to be played on behind closed doors. You know, we've got FA Cup draws that we don't yet know whether we're starting in first qualifying round or we're starting <laughs> in the preliminary round. We'll know that on Monday. Actually, we'll know that by the time this goes out. But But the whole point is that you know, around the, around the whole country, around the whole world, things are changing constantly and, and we're not going to be immune to that. So um, all I've said to Lee is just we, we all of us need to roll with the punches and whatever, whatever COVID-19 throws at us, whatever the FA throws at us, whatever the league throws at us, we just have to get on and, and do the best we can with it. So I guess just lastly for me, the, the 12th Man Fund, you set a target last season, £15,000. Yeah, that's that's been beaten. Um, uh, how far away are we, give or take, approximately, to your target of twenty five thousand? And Lee, from your side, how important is that money for you uh, to support your efforts in giving us a great squad for this season? Yeah, I mean, I've said I've said this before on a couple of occasions. One, it's, it's fantastic that people, you know, um, support the football club, support the twelve man fund, and and support myself and and the, and the players. But what it what it allows us to do is is carry a little bit of a better squad than last year. I felt that we had a very good one to, to 13, 14, but we need a good one to 16, 17, because it's going to be a long, tough season, like mm. Simon says. We don't know. We kick off in uh, September the 19th. Second game of the season's FA Cup on a Tuesday night. You know, we've got to make sure that we've got a, a fully fit, good squad going into these games, because you're going to get injury, suspensions, and maybe one or two might, might go on holiday. So... It's really important, as I say, I can't thank the people enough for supporting us 
Um, but if we can get to that magic 25 grand mark, it'd be great. And, and it just gives us that little bit extra to support what we're trying to do as a football club and not get stuck fighting hard fights in terms of financials um, because unfortunately everyone else is moving forward and we have to try and move forward with the times as well. And, and that's the important thing. And, you know, we want Hendon to push and we don't want Hendon to fall. And that's the, that's the big thing. And we want to keep pushing because it's mm. a fantastic club with a great tradition, great history, and um, we want to move it forward. Okay. And Simon, anything else that you'd like to add on? Uh, yeah, just, 12th just, Man Fund? just a couple of things. Firstly, the 12th Man Fund is just one component um, of the, of the, the fundraising that the board and the supporters trust board do and, and, and the broader and the broader support base as well. Um, in order for us to, to give Lee the best possible budget that we can, we, we really do need supporters to, to support the events that we do. And obviously there haven't been very many uh, or, or any since COVID-19 um, uh, and, uh, and, and lockdown, but we will be running some events during the course of the year and we're, we're anticipating some money coming in to go into the budget. Um, we, we've launched our corporate sponsorships. I think there's half a dozen, maybe seven or eight players where corporates, um, companies have, have sponsored players. Um, we'd love for every single player to be sponsored at least once, possibly twice. Joe White's got two sponsors. There's no reason why others shouldn't have two as well. Um, individual sponsorships, Again, individuals are, are, are sponsoring individual players. Steve, I think you've uh, you sponsored Mr. Allenson himself um, for the coming season. Um, we'll soon have the fixtures, and so it will be down to match balls and match sponsorships and program sponsorships, and of course, um, seat sponsorships as well. In terms of the 12th Man Fund, then, probably the biggest single component of our budget, and we targeted 25,000. We're up to about £22,000 in terms of what's been pledged. Um, three quarters of it's been received, but a, a chunk of it will be paid in monthly instalments, which is absolutely great. Uh, we've got one person who's paying £3 a month through PayPal. Um, and, you know, if we had 100 people paying three, another, another 100 people paying £3 a month, we'd, we'd smash through that target. Um, so I would ask supporters of Hendon Football Club because it is your club. It's not my club. It's not the board's club or the supporters trust's club. It's our club. Um, please support it as much as you can. Uh, put as much money into the club as you, as you possibly can because the alternative is that Betty's going to have to cycle for another 100 days. <laughs> and that's just not fair on her. So for me. your sake, please support the 12th Man Fund. Brilliant. So uh, talking about raising money there, um, I think I'm going to have to do this uh, this week. Uh, it's the snowball lottery results. Um, so this, this is almost unbelievable. First prize is ball 22. Um, I don't know if you know this person, Simon. Somebody called Lou Lawrence. I'm familiar Any with ideas her. who she might be? I'm familiar with her work. Well, we're both familiar because we did the draw together. So inevitable. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So Lou's won £229.50. Second prize was ball 163, and that went to David Coote. And that was £114.75p. Um, so congratulations to Lou and David. But for the trust, uh, which goes to the club, profit on that is £344. So thank you, everybody, for doing that. Um, Steve, can I, can I just, 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 say, just say one thing? Um, that, um, that Actually, the contribution to the trust for, for July is, is greater than the amount that you said, simply because both Lou... And, and very kindly, David, both um, volunteered to, to give their winnings back to the 12th Man Fund. Thank you. Fantastic. Amazing. All right. So, uh, Lee, we look forward to um, the next time we speak, actually talking about football. Absolutely. Which will, which will be incredible. So, uh, good luck. Enjoy your afternoon at Bracknell. Uh, Simon, congratulations on winning. Thank you. Um, Thank you. It, it's five all. I think the only way that uh, Beat the Manager can end uh, is on a final uh, winner takes all so Cyrus and I will get our heads together have a chat to find out who your opponent's going to be so Lee that's going to be down to us this time but uh, well done Simon uh, and Lee have good luck at Bracknell have a safe uh, safe couple of weeks guys talk to you soon thank you guys thanks, Steve thanks Lee